So on Kickboxing Life Stories today we've got a big one. We've got a uh, former two times uh, light middleweight world champion, uh, Fran Zakala. Fran, welcome to Kickboxing Life Stories. Yeah, thanks for having me here. So Fran, before we go on to the martial arts and the kickboxing, what you're known for, I want to know a little bit about you growing up, your home life, your school life, and you know, before martial arts come onto the scene. I think, I mean, I'm a, I had a great upbringing, very fat, you know, happy family, lifestyle. Um, and school was the same. I was, I was the one that was always kind of like um, thinking of things in the back of the class, not really paying too much attention. The, the daydreamer, right? And they do say that like daydreamers run the world, but, uh, <laughs> but that's what. So yeah, I was I was a daydreamer, and, and you know I did well at school, did okay at school, um, and then left, um, and just from there went into normal employment, working for like a steel company, um, and on the side of that I was starting to do, well, I'd, I'd done martial arts from a young age, but I'd started my own clubs um, from there, but it was only in schools and things like that. So when you when you were younger, I mean, first off, family life, uh, how, how many brothers, sisters? So you one, one uh, I was the youngest in the family, so the oh, oldest, the spoiled yeah. one. I was, I don't know, you can say the spoiled one, <laughs> they would say that 100%. I'm the youngest yeah, one, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all I can say. So yeah, so may, maybe I was, maybe I was a bit more spoiled than the rest, but uh, I was the one that was always beat up. By the, elder, <laughs> by the older brother and the older sister, so right. it's uh, but it's yeah, but it was a it was a happy family uh, environment. And it's Italian, uh, Italian heritage, route. so of course, uh, big families, uh, very layered. And, right. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a, a nice upbringing, and there's nothing I can say. You know, thanks, mom. It was a, it was a good <laughs> upbringing, uh, and dad, um, and uh, yeah, very happy, very happy. And and the building blocks. Of becoming a great fighter, were you were you a fighter at school? Later on, I mean, when I first went into like a secondary school, I got into a lot of trouble. I mean, the school that I went to wasn't the best school in the world. As in, we had a lot of kind of like travellers coming into the into the uh, right. school, and I was kind of not. I wasn't like the, they used to call it the cock of the school and things like yeah, that, yeah, where yeah. you were the, the the top dog in the school. But when they used to come into the school, you I would end up kind of defending the school and saying like, "What are you here for?" And they would be they would be driving in cars, you know, at 17 years old, 16 years old, driving in some school in cars, and, and I had a few kind of like, you know, uh, fights with them, and it, was, it wasn't because I, I, I was doing martial arts, and it was uh, half the time was me defending friends, you know, right. I mean? like, who would get into trouble and they couldn't defend themselves, so I was always like sticking up for them, um, and try, trying to be like the greater good, but getting myself in trouble at the same time. And how, what's the, the age gap between you and John? Uh, three years. Three years. Did he ever have to fight any of your battles back in the day? Uh, no, we, we, we went to separate schools. I mean, we stayed in like, real trouble, but my, my oldest brother um, got into quite a lot of trouble at school as right. well. So my, my mother said, you can't go to the school that he goes to because of the name. Uh, that he's kind of created, right. so you have to go to a different school. Then she put me into a, a school that wasn't that good either. So I, I ended up going down the same kind of lines a little bit. But I was always the good boy. I was always like kind of the one the teacher would select for things. Right. It was just that you know I was also the one that would, would defend people that, that needed defending. So there you go. And sporty? Were you sporty before yeah, really. martial arts? It was my favourite subject at school. Like you know when it was like the day that PE was on. Uh, that you know, it was it was a great day, and I would always be you know at the forefront of uh, PE, you know what I mean, and, and get involved with the physical education. So yeah. And w okay, so from school, what age did you show an interest in martial arts, and how did that come about? It was it, this. It was complete accident. We were, we were in Warsaw. I remember. I remember the day we were walking down the the market in Warsaw. And there was a sign that I saw, a very small sign, just saying Warsaw Karate Academy. Right. And I think you remember, I think you went there a couple of times as well, just to visit with Paul. You probably oh, remember. Who, yeah. Whose gym was it at the time? I, I can't remember exactly. It was. It was. Um, I can't remember exactly who it was. I was very young when I was going there, and I remember walking into the gym and just seeing for the first time people hitting bags. And it was there was like traditional classes on, and there was kind of like the start of kickboxing. Uh, at the time, and what was, age were you at this point? I think I was about, uh, I, was, I was about uh, eight or nine. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and then I remember going into there and thinking, "This is amazing. This is like magical," and I, I want to do it. And it was like I'd fell in love with it before I'd actually done the, the lesson. I remember doing my first lesson. I still remember standing there, punching, you know, in in the air, and and walking out, thinking, "God, this is amazing," you know. And then it just kept, carried on from there. I remember we used to catch buses up there, me and my brother. 
And then eventually- Did you start at the same time with your brother? We start exactly the same time, yeah. So, right. and then he got a car, he, you know, he's old enough to get a car, and then we started to, you know, go up, go up in our own steam. Um, and our parents never, ever took us to a, a club. It was always, we had to make our own way there. Right. Do our own things and, you know, save our pocket money and buy the equipment. And, and at the time, I think the person who used to work there, uh, and it used to be a few people that used to be right beyond the desk. They, they, they would like literally say, you know, what do you need? And I would say, like, you know, I haven't got enough money for some gloves. Mm -hmm. And they would like do little, we'd do tasks or jobs, or we would like save our pocket money up and pay per week to pay for them. And right. no matter what it took, it was like I was going to do it, no matter what. And and I think today, you know, I see kids come in and they're very privileged. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The parents just you know hand the money over to buy equipment and things like that. And I always think that you know I was like scraping. It, you know, for myself. Um, did you feel like you appreciate it a more, little bit more because oh, you had to do it totally. after your own I think you appreciate things that you work hard at anyway. You know what I mean? The, the harder, the, the more kind of turmoil that you get put through in your life, and the more that you appreciate what comes out at the end. He says that the, the trouble again, I sound like an old man when I'm saying these <laughs> days, these days. The youth but, today. Yeah, but yeah. When, when people don't get what they want immediately, it's almost like they give up. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, and it's like wow, it needs a lot more than that to be successful. So, so did you start your grading at Warsaw Karate Academy? Started my grading's there. Yeah. yeah, I think you were one of the first person I thought. You yeah, probably we, don't. You don't even really remember it. Yeah, no, Paul no. Hennessy brought you up. You were one of the first people I thought in a semi-contact competition. Wow. Yeah, and we got into the final. You joking? And you beat me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. I think I was an orange belt, and you were right. a, you were a black belt. Okay, so okay, you were flying okay. all these spinning kicks okay. and all this, and I was like, wow. You know what I mean? It's like it was crazy at the time, but uh, yeah. So you don't even wow. remember that. Uh, yeah. Wow, that's proper blast from the past. <laughs> it is. So, so your early uh, competitive career was semi contact. Semi contact. Yeah, I, and, and at the time it was great. I mean. At the start of semi-contact, I think when, when I started to go into it, you had to kind of land the punch hard, yeah, and you yeah, had to yeah. land the kick hard, and the referees were very like, no, that doesn't score if you don't hit it. And then it kind of changed after a while, which is why it lost its like luster for Watered me. Down. Yeah, but it, 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 it taught me everything I need to know, and I still use semi-contact kind of training in the full contact training, especially like the MMA training as well, yeah. for like to be fast on your feet, to move in, and, and getting on, you know, it really improved my targeting and my distance and everything else. So I never, I'm not knocking it at all, mm -hmm. but it was like, it got to a point for me where it got a little bit too watered down and it was like people just literally like diving. I think, yeah, it, it got commercialized to the point where they wanted everybody to be involved in sure. it. And, and obviously if you, if you got your little five-year-old or your seven-year-old old fighting in a competition, you don't want them to get hurt, do you? So. Yeah. But yeah, they tried to, I think with the points fighting, they tried to bring it back to old school, but the, you know, the modern schools weren't ready for it. No, they weren't ready for it. I mean, I remember fighting the FSK, FSK and um, I was like, I'd won the Grand Championships in there like three or four times in a row, and people were expecting me to win every time when, yeah. I, when I'd go. And I remember walking in and it was the finals, and somebody asking me if I was competing, and I was like, yeah, of course I am. And then he, I got into, not a final with him, but he kind of did a diving technique and they scored it. And I was like going crazy saying like, well, you can't yeah. score if he fell over on the, on the punch. And the referee was like, you know, don't tell me what to do. I know what I'm, what I'm talking about. I said, okay, fair enough. Cause I'd never ever want to argue with a referee. Mm -hmm. I was very respectful, you know, wherever I fought. And um, I remember knocking the guy out in, and they disqualifying me. And, and I just I, I just buried and, and, and walked off and then went back in the changing room and everybody was like, oh my God, I got it on video and that was amazing. And I think that was the day where I decided so, it's, it's over. You so I mean? how much points fight in experience or did you do like continuous or was it just points? It was it was uh, just points for, for you know, probably around 10 years. And, it, yeah. and I, was, I remember I was speaking to my wife about this and I was saying that I remember every weekend, there wasn't a weekend I yeah. wasn't fighting, I wasn't competing, I wasn't doing something. And we were always looking for the next competition. And we weren't waiting for our instructors to take us. We were like doing our own thing. So and was this still out of Warsaw? This, this, no, this, I was, I'd moved around. I was going to Kidderminster under right. uh, John Kane. And he used to teach like, like a bit of Thai and very traditional karate and, and mixing it in with uh, like continuous. Mm -hmm. That's when I started a little bit more like continuous in there. And then, um, and I was kind of, 
fleeting between a couple of gyms at the time mm -hmm. uh, and taking a bit from everything really. Who, um, who would you class as being your instructor back then? Who was your main influence as an instructor? I think as an influence, Wayne Stokes. Right. Okay. I think I think Wayne Stokes came in um, while I was in Warsaw Crowd Academy and he just came in. I remember him wearing some American um, full contact trousers. Cool. That's cool. cool. Back in the day. Cool. I mean, yeah, the stars and the stripes yeah. and everything. I was like, wow. Who's this guy? And he starts doing these jumping kicks and spinning kicks on the back. And I was like, I need to learn this. Because I was yeah. doing very traditional you know, yeah. striking. And um, and I was like, I need, to I need to learn this. And then I kind of moved off with, with Wayne and he started classes there. And then there's like Wayne and Martin Cole. Martin, uh, great yeah, instructor. Great, great instructors. And, and then the, like I kind of trained with them for a, a number of years and then kind of went off and did my own thing eventually. Yeah. But the competitions you like, I did the same as myself, off your own back. Off my own back, yeah. yeah. It was definitely a case of, like, some, I mean, I, I get it as being an instructor now. It's really hard, like, teaching your classes every week, mm -hmm. and then it's just people saying, oh, will you come and you corner me, and will you do this for me? And you, do, you can't split yourself in into six pieces, so it, it, I understand that they couldn't do that for me, so I was saying, okay, look, I'll, we'll go on our own, and we'll do our own thing, and sometimes they were there, sometimes they weren't. But I think a good fighter anyway, you're in the ring on your own. Yeah. Your corner is there for, you know, some, you know, to tell you what could happen or, you know, just give you a little tips. But they're not there to control you on a remote control. Yeah. You are in control. So, and I say this to my own fighters, I say like, you know, I'm, I'm there in your corner, I'm there to back you up, but I'm not there to tell you what to do. Yeah. I, I've yeah. told you what to do in training. It's you, up to you, you see some fighters and they, they they almost can't operate unless they've got their coach behind them. 100 percent Yeah. It's a, it's crazy. Like if the, co the coach's not there, they'll they'll blame the coach for not winning. You know, yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. it's you in the ring, you know, you can't blame anybody else if you don't win this yeah. battle, you know what I mean? And and it's you know, you've got to be a big enough person to to be able to, you know, you know, live on your own in the ring. Yeah, yeah. that I suppose that independence served you well though, like Throughout your career, didn't it? Throughout, yeah. Because, I mean, everything I've done has been kind of on my own back and I've looked at other people and how they do things and then kind of adjust it to how I think it should be done. And, and, it, and it's, you know, it's worked because, you know, we produce good fighters, you know, in, in the... Uh, in in martial arts, though, Fran, I, I find like there's leaders and there's followers, there's certain, like, instructors, very good instructors, but they just haven't got the confidence to take a step on their own. Sure. They need that association behind them or they need that guidance. Of course. But it's horses for courses, isn't it? Yeah, of course. So circuit wise, FSKs, did you ever do the MA MAIs? Uh, MAIs, I did all of the circuits that were out there at the time right. of that. So the SKOs, the FSKs, the uh, MAIs, everything. Everything that was going. So I remember from the SKOs, it was like a consortium of instructors, mainly from the West. Yeah, we, I mean, we got involved with that and I was part of that for a, a time. Um, and again, we just kind of like, like any association, eventually it kind of like gets a little bit broken up. And then mm -hmm. there was, as soon as politics came in, came in it for me, I was out. And yeah, it was like, yeah. you know what, if I can't run my own show and I can't say the what things that I want, the way I want to do it, then, you know, uh, it's time for me to leave. Mm -hmm. and, and it served me well because things got stronger from there when I did, when I did leave, yeah. So who were your early influences and your role models? Because I remember, like, we, we started with Eka and it was all about the Howard Browns and the Cash Guilds. Sure. Um, we didn't even know about points fighting at the time. Who were your early influences, both on an instructor level and on I a think one of my level? earliest ones that like, I used to think, oh my God, this person's like a god, it was like Gary Osborne. Yes, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I didn't have that too much detail, I was very young, I didn't have that too many dealings with him at the time. But I just remember I went to watch him fight the ones and I was like just in awe. And it wasn't, I, I, I've never been one for like following people. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's always been like, I watch them and say, oh, they're really good, but I've never been one to, to kind of like, uh, I want to fight like that person. I, I'll take a bit from everybody, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's, it's, um, or I'll look at somebody and say, well, that's a, you know, that's a cool style that he's got. Um, you know, maybe I'll put that into my teaching element and, and think of, you know, around it. But I never like look at one person and I never had one person I was fixated on that. I was like, yeah. okay, that's, that's my, you know, person I'm going to look up to for the rest of my life. And from an instructor's point of view? Uh, instructors again. It was it was probably probably Wayne Stokes and Martin Cole. Right. You know what I mean that, that I looked at, and they were the ones that were like kind of leading the way in the instructing at the time. Um, so yeah. And did they get you to black belt? Yeah, uh, I, I went through. I, I think I got my black belt with the SKL at the time with Del Samson, and mm -hmm. but it was Wayne was one of the, the 
main instructors there and, and, and Martin as well. Um, and I think it, it was it was it was weird because the black belt came after I'd won a lot of the FSKs and stuff. So I was yeah. kind of like at that level before I got to black belts. And then I I, I think I took, actually I took my black belt with uh, John Kane in in Kidderminster. Right. And, and he was a tough instructor. Do you know what I mean? At the time, he was you know he wanted to make you work for whatever whatever you did. I remember him being quite harsh when it, in his teaching methods, but. You know, it's, it was all good. You know, well, you, all you, good. you enjoyed, I enjoyed the discipline. it. I enjoyed the discipline. I think, I think people like these days. I think people need that structure. You need a structure mm. in place. You can't have a coach that's going to be okay. Yeah, if you want to train, you can. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like hey, you've got to be there. You've got to train. And if you're telling me you want to be the best, then this is what you've got to do. And if you don't do what I say, then you know you're not going to get there. You know. So, as a young martial artist, the, was it the black belt you were chasing, or was it the competition? You know what? I don't think I was ever chasing a black belt. Right. I think I, I there was. Part, I'm, I'm sure as a kid I was like, oh, I want to be a black belt, I, and it wasn't. It wasn't the competition. It was just the love of the sport. I just mm-hmm. loved doing the sport. I loved. I loved the fight. Uh, the fighting being. I loved the winning, of course. Um, and I even loved the, 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 the hard times when I used to come back and think, oh, I could have won that, but I didn't yeah, win yeah, it. And, yeah, yeah. and going back to the gym and training even harder because I didn't want it to happen again. So you have to. And I keep saying to my fighters, look. If they've lost a fight, they get really downhearted about it, and I'm like, that's like the, the best people in the world have lost the most yeah, yeah. times. So like, you know, you're on your way to being one of the best in the world, but like, you don't see that; they just see the loss. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, now you've got to have people. Because when I when I started my full contact record, which we'll talk about, I never lost anything. You know, it was like win, 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 kept winning all the way through to like world world champion, and. People thought that's when my students were told, oh, that's the way, he's like, he never loses. But you've done all your luck. Well, I've all the lost for the previous yeah, yeah. years, you know, and, and they, they were hard. And, and you, as a young, you know, a young chap, you do fight with your ego. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You do feel like, oh, mate, you know, I'm not good enough, or I'm not this or that. And I see my students now always questioning themselves, always saying, I'm not good enough. And I'm like, you are, you just don't yeah. realize it yet, you know. And as you get older, you kind of can push your ego aside. Yeah. And say, you'll, you'll be okay. I mean, I remember. Nights, I never used to sleep. You know what I mean? Like, right. lost the fight, I was like, I couldn't sleep about it. But uh, did you feel as well that, that, like, I would say to my guys, if, if you lose and you have a little cry, that's okay because it meant that much to you. Yeah. You know? if, 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 of course. Yeah. Like the Anthony, Anthony Joshua thing, like, all right, I've lost, no worries, I'll be better next time. For me, it's like, come oh, on, well, be a little bit more passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, sure, you know? sure. And you've got to be, you've got to have that passion, you've got to have that, you know, that, that will to, to win. But at the same time, you know, to get there, you have to go through the hard times, and that's it. So, the FSK, where you were treated harshly, sure. um, was that the catalyst for you to look at full contact? Yeah, I remember sitting in the, in the changing rooms and and thinking like, you know what, I want to be able to, I don't want the referee to be getting getting involved with mm-hmm. me in the, in the fight. And when you, when you think of a fight, I mean, it's not a real fight. Mm-hmm. I mean, they say it's a sport, but, um, you want to be able to like finish your opponent. You want to be yeah. able to like walk away and say that's it. He's 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 gonna give in, or he throws a tail take in, or, or that's it. Hands that's it. Take those judges' hands, and that's how I want. I want to win the fight, and and that that's and I walked. That was the last day I ever did like continuous or well, sorry, semi contact. I never I never went back after that. And I started to focus on. I used to go, go and watch lots of full contact competitions. Right. And I remember just sitting in the crowd and. Just buying tickets to go and sit in the crowd. I remember watching these fights and thinking, these guys have got no technique. You yeah. know what I mean? They're very wild. You like watching street fights. And yeah. I was thinking, all it needs is something to go in there very technical and very like clean, and they could wipe the floor with any of these. And I was thinking, is that me? Because it's very easy for yeah. people outside the of ring course, to say course, yeah. that everybody outside the ring's got an opinion of yeah. They're like, I could do better. You know what I mean? But I was thinking, I think I can. So like, I remember going for my first fight. And where uh, was that? The first fight that, uh, that helped, it was in Wolverhampton. I think it was in the um, the Lighthouse Bar in Wolverhampton. Okay. Remember the old cobble yeah, floor and everything? Yeah, yeah. I remember fighting a guy, um, his name, I remember his name actually, and I don't remember names very well, and his name was Russ Hughes or something. And, and I remember that because somebody kept shouting, his name's not that, it's Hugh Lewis. I was like, Hugh Lewis. <laughs> okay, his name okay. was Hugh Lewis. And they'll say, no, Hugh Lewis. And I remember thinking, oh my God. I've got all my club here, and it's in the middle of Wolverhampton. Mm-hmm. It's like the first one I've, uh, I'm doing a full contact fight, and I remember stopping him. Like I remember him throwing up in the corner. I think I hit him in the head once, and he, and he started throwing up. And I thought that's it, it's over. Um, 
And I just I remember leaving the ring thinking this is where I did. Need to did stay. you ever? I mean, I know that I did, and a lot of people from my background did because we were out on the semi contact point circuit. Sure. And then we transitioned into full contact, and we we got uh, their only point fighter. Well, I had so many comments like on the first fight or second fight I had. He would call it to me and say, you know, uh, that's pretty good, but you need to keep your guard. I mean, you need to do this because you're a seven contact fighter yeah, and you can yeah. tell that in the ring. And But it's good that you speed it. And, and they were very kind of like, and I would just nod my head and, you know, be humble about it and say, yeah, oh, is that what you think? And, and then I thought, God, I've got to prove myself. You know, yeah. I've, got to, I've got to prove that I can um, do that. And I'd done, a, you know, a lot of kind of like boxing training anyway. And I, looking at the, the quality of fighters that were out there, even at the top level, I was thinking, you know, they're not that good. I, yeah. don't, I don't see that. And I was, by now I'd got my own school, I was instructing, and people kept asking me, like, you know, are you going to compete? Are you mm -hmm. going to do that? And I thought, you know what, I think I've got it. For the, for the sake of my business mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. I've got to get involved with the full contact. Did you have to change your style much from, from your points? Continuous to full contact. Yeah, I think I think what served me right was I could combine them because I could always punch. I always had a strong punch. Mm -hmm. I, I always could finish people. I could always like you know knock people out. And because they were so static mm -hmm. and I was so used to moving, I realised that oh, I could get in, do the damage, and get back out before they even knew yeah. about it. Where I wouldn't like stand toe to toe and just kind of like you know thunder yeah. with them unless I had to. I mean, mm -hmm. if that was the if that was or I thought needed doing, then I would stand out to tell. But I think the uh, the semi-contact side of it was, it got me kind of in and out, and they didn't know what to do with me, because it was yeah. like, there's nothing they'd ever seen before. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, that, and that's why I kind of like, I went through the, the kind of ranks very quickly. I, I always found, certainly with you, Phil Richards, I had it with myself, it was like, yeah, he's all right, but wait until he steps up a level. That's why I kept Wait until he goes up a level. I think I was annoying so many people. I mean, I kept here for the grapevine. I think people just wanted just to lose. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the when, old child. The yeah, old like, yeah, yeah. They really wanted that to happen. And I think it was getting through to like, not the, the perils of B really. They were saying like, like, you know, I think he's gonna lose this one. I think it was almost like they were willing it to happen. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I was like, wow, you know, is this what, people do to people who are successful, you know what I mean? They yeah. want to knock them down a peg or two, and uh, they wanted to see me fall to say, I told you so. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I just had to keep proving them wrong. <laughs> so, you, so when you started Full Contact, was your aspirations to go to the top in it, or was it just to like try this new fighting style it, and see it, how it's, 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 go? A, it's a funny story, because I remember saying, look, I'm saying to my, my fiance at the time, saying, listen, I'm going to try and, you know, just get the, the English title, or the area title. So I just want a shot at that, you know, yeah. and I'm going to leave it alone. Yeah, and she went, okay, you know, why, why not? You, you, you train every week anyway, you might as well, you know, go and do that. So I did that and won that quite easily. And then I remember Paul Lacey saying, you know, Fran, that was a really good fight. He says, you know, I did better than I thought you were going to be. So, how about doing this fight? You know, and I said, I did another fight, then it was English title. Mm -hmm. And so I remember turning around to and saying, yeah, it's, it's, it's an English title, and it's been offered to me, and it probably, you know, it's pretty, this doesn't happen. Your, your rise to the top was quite quick, though, wasn't it? Was it like, from one to next to next to next to next. Yes, yeah, so it was like uh, I mean, I had a, I had like a couple of fights in between, but there were more. There weren't anything to do with the titles. There were can just you, fights. Can you remember any of the opponents that you fought for the titles back in the day? Oh my goodness, that's asking. Um, so we've got no. I, can't <laughs> I, can't, I mean, I remember there's a, a guy I fought in the NEC, um, Griswold. I was sort of thinking what that his name okay. was, Dylan Griswold. I remember. I remember. He like give me a really he was going out. He was about six foot two. Right. I was looking at him, I was thinking, my God, these tall guys. Because I, I was probably heavy for my weight. You know, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably if I fought nowadays, I probably fight at sixty eight kilograms. Right. And I was fighting at seventy two point five. Yeah. Um, but I had the power to trade with them, so I thought, you know, I'll, I'll stick at this in my weight that I'm at, so I'm gonna stick at it. Um, I remember him looking at me and giving me a really good look, and, and I remember my brother being in my corner and saying, don't look, don't look. You know, mm -hmm. don't even put you off. And I just laughed and said, you know, these these people that do this don't realise they're going to be in a ring with me in two seconds time. Yeah, and then yeah, there's yeah. no one to step in the way, you know yeah. what I mean? So, um, and I remember knocking, like, hitting him with an uppercut and his gum shield flying across the ring. And then I, I think I stopped him in the, the third round or something. And um, I think after that, I think that was for the English title. Right. Um, so I went from the Midlands, I went English, and then it was... Um, British, and then it went European, and then I went Commonwealth, and then and then it was a shot at the world title with Dale. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember when you were coming through and like you know 
setting a light the full contact division and we were always like a champion of you like it was like um Franz Zapala, he's come from where we've come he's doing what we're That's, doing and, yeah. and we were like you know watching 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 but there were people that thought you know the people that were at the top level british uh, european oh, world no, no, no. That, that at that point you were going to come and stuff but you were knocking out nearly everybody you thought yeah i think my knockout rate was you know really high so and, and people were coming to watch the, the thought he's going to knock somebody out you know yeah. what I mean? so but uh, not just with brute power from, oh no from technique no, and speed no. And i didn't ever go out there saying oh i want to knock the guy out mm -hmm. it was just like whatever happens happens if, if i you know if i take him out i take him out but it was never kind of like, I wasn't one of these people that would swing punches and hope for the best, you know what I mean? It would be okay. So I would love the 12, when it got to 12 rounds, I would yeah. love 12 rounds. Because yeah, yeah. I think I only got started probably about fourth or fifth round. So right. I never ever used to like the three rounders, the five rounders. I used to hate them because it, so, it, it would, they could have like good technique, but they have, might maybe, maybe they didn't have the stamina. So yeah. I, I would get stronger through the fight, and they would get weaker through the fight. And yeah, then yeah. Eventually, about the seventh or eighth, usually I'd stop them. So, what did you, any of those early fights? Well, British, European, world. Did any of them go the distance? Um, no, I don't think any of them did. All stoppages. All stoppages. Yeah. So Dale Wood, um, been around forever. Sure. Um, one of these top guys that a lot of people were saying. When you meet someone like Dale Wood, I remember you're reading. gonna come on yeah. Um How did the fight come about? Were you offered that as a vac? Was it a vacant world title? Well, it was a vacant world, world title. I think I think we was looking to fight a guy called Wolf at the time, mm -hmm. um, and then he went vacant. And then um, Paul says, well, "Are you up for it?" And at the time, I was like in peak condition. I was yeah. like, "Yeah, I'm ready. 100%. Let's go." And um, I just remember reading something. I, it was all negative towards me, but it gave me fuel. Right. You know what I mean, they were saying things like, "This guy's going to teach you a boxing lesson." And I remember, I remember getting up because again I couldn't sleep. I was like, oh, "I've got to win this fight." How many fights have you had up until this point? I think it was about. It was. It was a. Were we talking just four contact fights? Yeah. Uh, in between, like all the title belts, about thirty. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's quite high. You know, it's quite high. But um, I just remember thinking. But some of the fights that I had done were kind of like light continuous yeah. as well. They weren't like anything to do with the full contact scene. But um, I just remember thinking, Dal Woods might test. You yeah. know what I mean? Like this, everybody's, gonna, everybody's telling me I'm gonna lose. Right. You know, everybody's gonna tell me I'm gonna lose. I've got to, I can't just win this on points. I've got to win this so convincingly that people will just stop talking. You know what I mean? And that was my incentive. I was and like- go, Going into that fight, did you have a hundred percent faith and confidence that you were going to come the victor, or was that like that that almost margin of doubt in your brain saying, you know, he could be too much for me? No, there was no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I think I think at the time I, was, I trained. I don't think anybody could train any harder than I trained. You right. know what I mean? I, I, I don't know of anybody that I've trained that trained as hard as that that I trained. I was running every day. I was in the gym every day. I was I was. Always like you know taking care of my injuries and yeah. training and, and it was it was a constant thing and I I remember saying that look this is a one shot thing for me right you know what I mean like like I've got to win it there's I'm not gonna do it and then if I lose I can go to sleep at night and yeah. say I did everything I could you and know was I mean? this the end of the road for you was this like I'm gonna win my world title and I'm like I'm no I, no because I, I always said I always said if I win the world title. I'll ha I'll, somebody will have to take this from me. Right. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to, for this, I want to keep the standard high in kickboxing and right. I want to keep the name of kickboxing alive and I want to keep everything, you know, um, kind of going on the kind of like, for the for the, the audience really. I think and, you were flying just, the flag for full contact at the time. At the time, I think, I think, I remember walking into venues and like people partying for me mm -hmm. to walk through and it was, and it was not that, that I, it was nice, it was a nice feeling, like everybody knew who you were and you know, everybody was expecting you to, well when's the next fight and yes. when's this gonna happen? So you couldn't, it was very hard to walk away from because you were very like, you know, I was I was a young guy, I was like 27, 28 at the time and I was living the, the, the best life, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I was at the top of my career, I was starting to make money in my business, mm -hmm. I was, you know, everything was going my way. So I thought, why do I wanna walk away from that? Yeah. So you stopped dialing in what round was it? It was a third round. Wow. Yeah, so it. Uh, he's, he's still upset about that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, really <laughs> you know what, Dale? I mean, I speak to Dale now. We, we were friends. He's a great bloke. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and 
even then, like looking back on the video now, um, many years later, and I only looked at it after Dale's interview, and I was right. like, you know what, I haven't seen that video for ages, so I watched it. And something that, that really hit me was like in the old days, like the, the when he went down, he went down really heavy. Yeah. And I knew, I knew when I hit him, it, it, like, I thought, God, that's, that's a hard punch. And, it, and, it, and when he hit the deck, I just remember thinking, is he okay? Right. Do you know what I mean? And like, and the respect that, like, because you know from like the, the semi concert, you would turn your back to show a sign of yeah, respect yeah. if you yeah. got hurt until the referee said you could stand back up again, things like that. And all I was interested in is, uh, and I thought, oh, I want the world title, I'm winning. Mm -hmm. and, and these days, they would be jumping up the ropes and celebrating yeah, yeah. and this and that. And I just couldn't celebrate because the, there was a guy on the floor and he was injured, do you know what I mean? And, and all I thought was, is he okay? Do you know what I mean? Is he gonna, is he gonna be okay? And as soon as they got up, I was like, okay. Do you think that was down to like the journey and the martial arts and the, the, the points? The fact that you, you get some kickboxers and they just fight us. Sure. And then you get other kickboxers, but they're martial artists. I think that's what's missing these days. I, I love the, you know, you guys with the black belts coming into the ring. The Always want a black school. belt, yeah. It's like, and I don't know if that had an effect on my opponent or whatever, but like, it just seemed, it was almost like I'd lost a limb without the belt. Do you know right. I mean? It was like, it was like a balance for me. It was, it was something that had to be there. Cause if it wasn't, it'd be like, you'd throw me off. The old PKA, American PKA fights you used to see on um, on YouTube from like the 80s, early 80s, and they all wore the black belts. So I thought that was a really nice touch. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I was kind of kind of known for it, and a lot of people were, and I never understood it, because it was, for me, it was a disrespect to my instructors, and, right. and people who had got me where I got to. So, you know, by not wearing it, it was almost like saying, okay, I'm not interested in it, you know what yeah, I mean, anymore, yeah, and yeah. no, I'm, I'm taking you in with me, and, and then we're gonna do this together. Well, it seems to be working for you. That's it. So you're world champion, you're top of the trip. How did that feel after all that years? How, I mean, how long had you been involved in martial oh arts God. up until that point? So uh, 27, 28 27, years yeah. So it, it was, we're talking 18, 19 years, 20 years, you know what I mean? So, and then. See, this is another thing, Fran, like, yeah. when you won the world title, you were almost considered being, oh, the new kid on the block has won the world title. But you've got 20 years Cheers of experience. experience. That's, that, then that's what used to annoy me when people used to say, oh, you know, you should do this and shit. And I'm thinking, God, these people who are talking to me haven't been doing it as long as me. It's just that they haven't seen me on this scene before. They haven't seen me in the full contact scene. Yeah. But how did I feel after the world title? It was a bittersweet. I think, I remember the, I just didn't know where to put myself. I right. thought, I thought God, this is it. I've done, like I'd, I'd set myself a challenge and I thought I'm gonna go for the world title. And <laughs> as, as I said, I kept saying to my wife, because she was pregnant when I won the world title, and I thought I've got to win it because right. I've got a baby coming along. And um, I remember winning it and thinking, is that it? Is that it? You know, is, 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 it, it was not, not saying bad to Dale, but it was easier than I thought it was gonna be. Right. That's because I probably I trained like an absolute yeah. you know, crazy yeah. person. But um, and I remember going to the after party and just being really depressed. And, and it was a real shock to me. Down, the yeah, come down yeah. was like, and people were like more excited around me than I was excited. And I went home early and, and just, you know, like. Did you enjoy the build up and the training more than the actual yes, fight? You did. I think I did. I so think that's I, probably, it's over now, isn't it? Yeah. Like, what are you yeah. gonna do tomorrow? It's really strange. It was a strange one. And I didn't, I didn't expect that feeling to come over me. Right. And then it was like, okay, let's go for another fight. You know, yeah, the, I, I need another fight now, like quickly, because if I don't get one, I don't know what's going to happen to me, because I feel a bit down about winning the yeah. world title. And it, and it was a strange, it, that kind of lasted a week, I think, it lasted a week where I, I was like, what, what am I going to do now? There's no other yeah. title, I can't win a world, world title. Do you, do you know, know what, I mean, politically at the time, you didn't see that many unifications. Yeah. So it's like your ISK world champion, which is like a great world title, you sure. know, one of the biggest world titles out there. Like, if it was today, you'd be then looking for the WK, the IFO, the, sure. the, you know. At the time it was the ISK champion, not really anywhere to go. How many defenses did you make at that before we lost the world title? Um, well, the, the, there was just a lot of exhibition fights. Right. I mean, I did so many exhibition fights. I think I probably did about four exhibition fights before I fought for uh, like a defense of the, of the title. And, and I was just, uh, I said to, I remember saying to Paul, look, Paul, I'm on peak, peak condition. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long this is gonna last for, mate. Yeah. So get me some fights now. 
And he's like, okay, we've got the NEC, the pain and glory coming yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. And at the time I was world champion, I was like, okay, get me whoever, you know, because I wasn't one for picking or selecting fighters. Yeah. I was like, just get me somebody in the ring. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't care what his record is. And then there was like fights at St. George's Day. I remember in the Warsaw Town Hall and I fought the French guy there and I don't yeah, remember, I remember, his, I remember um, his name, yeah, yeah. but I remember him being probably yeah. my hardest fight. Right, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, and, and, and it was that and I was, uh, I was like flying the flag really at the time, I was like world champion and just doing everything that I could just to stay in the limelight. Was it, was it hard? I mean, the, the NEC fights, the Pain and Glory fights were great for his exposure right. because like they, they put your name out there. But was it hard to put in the same kind of effort into your training without having those world title fights? Yeah, it was. It, self motivation is the hardest thing for all my students. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I'll say like you've got to be self motivated. You can't let somebody else do it for you. But once you're world champion, it's like how do you keep that? Like you say, yeah. how do you keep that? Like because there's no goal. It's like just keep it. And for the most part, you're cracking your own whip, aren't you? You are, and it's. Uh, that's a tough one because you think, because people are saying like, I had all my family saying to me, what are you doing it again for? Yeah. You know, you fought for years and years and years, you've got to where you wanted to get to. What? The only way now is Darren. And yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, I know that. I know one day I'll lose, yes. but that's not the point that, that a fighter shouldn't not fight because he thinks that one day he's gonna lose. That yeah, just yeah, doesn't yeah, make yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't calculate in my head, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it was a lot tougher to kind of, Retain the titles and fight as a world champion in, in you know in any event. But it was there was there was a couple of I think I fought in two Pain and Glories as yeah. world champion, and I fought the German champion yeah. uh, there. Um, and again, I think I stopped him in the third. Yeah, I think with the knockout. Um, I commentated on a, on a lot of your fights back in the day. Yeah. Um, so we get to the Willy Burrell defense. Yes. Uh, what did you know about him going into it? I knew that he was. Somebody said he was a really strong. You know, hard puncher, um, hard kicker, and it, it, and uh, and at the time I wasn't worried about him at all. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was thinking I could f float around this guy and pick him off. And I wasn't. And I remember that the, the thing was I'm not going in to knock him out because mm -hmm. he's strong and he's resilient, like all the kind of European fighters yeah, are. Yeah, you know, yeah, they come yeah. across. But I thought I'm just going to like make an exhibition of this. You know right. what I mean? Like I, I like to get out and show what kickboxing can do and. I remember, I think it was the... Was training well? Was training well? Training well? went really well. Training went great. I remember like being a little bit, like not taking training as seriously as I probably should uh, for this one. And then I remember getting on the scales mm -hmm. and everybody like, oh, he's everybody up on the scales. And I remember him taking his top off and he had a muscle on muscle. Yeah. He, he was, was so on, ripped. And, and everybody was like, oh my God, friend, did you see him? And I was like, it doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? He's got two arms and two legs and he's a, yeah. he's a human being. And that's well, it. Do you think maybe overconfidence? Like 20 years of victory? I think so. I think, I think, look, no, I, I, I never ever got in kind of too confident. I always went in thinking, I've got to do this. You know, my mission on this person is the same as the last person I fought. I'm, ne I'm never went in thinking, I'm easy going to beat him or I'm going to yeah. beat him. Um, but I remember it was in the third or fourth round. I broke my hand. No way. In that fight, I broke my thumb, and I've still got the pin in it now. Well, and um, and then I, I, I remember going back to the corner. And I, 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 think I, I don't think I've ever heard that. I broke my hand in that fight. Did you, did you tell anyone about it? I, no, I just remember I my, my hand in it. I was booking it after, but I broke it in the in the the third round. And my brother wanted to throw the towel in, and he mm -hmm. said, "You broke your hand there." And I says, "I think I've broke my thumb." And the pain didn't come immediately, but I think after like two rounds in, it yeah. was, I couldn't use my right hand. If you watch that video, I don't throw my right hand. Wow. It's only my left hand I throw. And I remember saying to I remember saying to Corner, this is a great story, because I'll say I won the fight with my left hand. Wow. And my legs. And if you watch the fight after I break my hand, because you, you see me hit and the referee, because I put my hand there and, and the referee says, did you get hit in the green? And I'm right. like, I went, no. And then the, the bell goes and I go back to the corner. And then that's where I, when my corner said, you know, what's wrong with your hand? And I think, that was four rounds into a 12 round fight. 12, yeah, I went 12 rounds. And I and I think he realized probably on the 11th or 12th, because uh, I, I still, looking back on the video, I still think I won the fight right. on points. It's just towards the, the you, I think did, did you take a couple of counts in that? I think on the, no, just, I took a body shot on the, I think the 11th round. Right. And um, because I just couldn't keep him off me, yeah, because yeah. I just couldn't fight my right hand. And uh, I just remember saying, don't we don't throw the tail in. 
I'll fall in with just the left and two legs. And I, the amount of kicks I threw on that fight was probably the most I've ever thrown in a fight. Right. Just to keep him away to, 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 to fight. So, and it, and it didn't go in my favour, but, you know, it is what it is. And that's did, it. But you, how did, I mean, that's the first significant loss since yeah. your FSK. Yeah. And, and even then, when you lost in the FSK, it's like, come on, guys. Yeah. That's your first significant loss. Yeah. As a champion, with an ego, with the riding high on the confidence. Sure. How did that affect you? You know what? It didn't affect me. Right. I remember being the chairman and, and, and people being absolutely like, got, you know, chasing, oh, you shouldn't have lost it and this and that. And I was like, guys, calm down. And like, mm -hmm. calming everybody down in the chamber and saying, look, you know, it's not the end. It's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, at the moment, I've got an injury and I do not want to talk about the, the loss. Let's yeah. get back up, let's get back into it. Then I found it, I don't know if you know about this, but two weeks later, because I asked for the rematch, right? Because I wanted the rematch with it. And they said, no, it's been stripped from him. And he'd been done for steroids. No, really? And he'd been kept. And that was that was the story I was told. And I was like, I want a rematch. And he was like, no, and he'd been done on steroids. So I could have really, really argued the point and said, well, if that's the case, I want yeah, the title yeah, back. Yeah. But it, I'm not that sort of person, you know what I mean? It's like, what was oh, the healing time on the injury? It was about, um, it was about, it was about, about Three or four months, right? Yeah, that I that I kind of like came back, but even then I couldn't use the hand. So I was, I, I, I always think things like this. I always say to my students that I had, I broke my hand. It was the best thing ever for my jab. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like my jab got ten times stronger, and uh, when I got the use of my right hand back, it was like you know I was a different fighter. So, so I mean that shows the measure of a man, isn't it? Like you, you're there with your broken finger or yeah. your broken thumb. thumb yeah. And you're saying, I want a rematch against him, the guy that beat me, because obviously we we seen well, I didn't know about your hand. All right. And I didn't know I think it was common knowledge. And I didn't yeah. know that you, you didn't want Willie Burrell again. You know. All right. Yeah. So how long was it after that before you competed again? Um It was as soon as I could get back in the saddle really. And I think I remember saying like, you know, I wanna I want, I want another shot at the title. Who's got it? Or is there a vacancy? Or you know, who's the top guy at the moment? And we had the Turkish guy. Ibrahim uh, Sigay, that's yeah, it, yeah. yeah. And, I knew, and I did a little bit of research on him. And because I, I knew I wasn't back on 100% form when I right. was back into that fight because I'd been, you know, not trained, couldn't train properly and, and things like that. But I remember just, just getting back into it and I was thinking, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. And he was unbeaten at the time, I think. I think the he'd been unbeaten and um, again that didn't bother me I was like you know just bring yeah, it yeah. you can't be that good I know he's I know he's very flash and he stopped a lot of people with like jump kicks and was that the same kicks. weight as well was that, that was the stuff? same weight that was like middle and um, and again I think I stopped him in the I don't know third or fourth round and it was a pretty easy fight to be fair again won that title no no feelings you yeah, know what I mean like okay. it was even was, though we're two, two times Yeah, two times world. world champion. I know, it was, it's, it's strange. I think that's the sort of person that I am. I think that's the sort of person you probably have to be. It's like, you're never ever satisfied. You know what do I mean? you feel like now that the, the, the book is closed on your career, do you look back at it now and go, I did all right? That was, yeah, you I did, know. It's, yeah, you do probably do now. Yeah. You probably think, wow, you know what I mean? It's like, what did I do? You know what I mean? Yeah. At the time, I, I don't think I took it in. I don't think I made the most of it. You know, I think these days, if. If it had been the same as it was kind of back then, and we yeah. had the social media, and we had, plus, I think kickboxing would be in a different place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I the, think so. Yeah, that it was. So two times champion of the world, uh, back on top. Some great fighters around that time that your name Fantastic. has been linked yeah. to. Dean Sugden, sure. Um, I'm sure he was a world champion at the same weight or the weight above. Yeah, I think so. I think he might have been middleweight, um, but great fighter. And it was like Fran and Dean, John Orchard, obviously, yeah. which which you had tussles with, um, sure. who helped Lex Easton. Yeah. Uh, was there ever a mention of you fighting these guys? See that there was there was one thing that came up, and I don't know if you remember it, but somebody put saying an eight man tournament. Yes. Do you remember that? ABX. And, and it was me. Yeah. There was Lex in there. There was I, I can't remember who else was part of it, but I know there was all that Dean you know, was in there. Dean was in there, and I thought this is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, and he never, never came off. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was, I think that would, because I, I remember thinking that's going to be the end of my career. Right. You know, I wanna, I'm going to go there, I'm going to test myself, and this is one of my last tests, and it's something I can train for again, so I really want to do well in that eight, man. 
Um, and it never materialised. never materialised, yeah. Do you, do you think that would have... I'd, Although it's exciting to have all of you guys fighting on the same night against each other, for me, it was like mm, three three round fights. Yeah. You know, you, if, you, if, you beat, if you beat Dean over a three round fight, it's like, yeah, but could you beat him over a 12, 12 round, round fight? fight? Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. It's a yeah. difference. It's it a needed thing. like a, um, you know, like the, the Super Six tournament or the, um, you know, the, the boxing tournament that they took to, um, into Saudi Arabia that um, Callum, uh, Callum Smith yeah, won. Yeah, got it. So yeah, so you, it's like a proper round each yeah, fight yeah, and yeah, you go yeah. from that. Yeah. It yeah, needed yeah. that, but it got people talking about you against the likes of John Orchard. Exactly. And that was set. And I've got to say, like, one of my favourite fights in, yeah. in kickboxing history. Yeah. Um, you got to have been there at the time to appreciate it. It was like the Ben and Eubank Sure. Of the kickboxing world, yeah. Yeah. like we were all championing Fram because Fram was from the ISK and from our group. Obviously, all the other guys were uh, the Carl Sams and Colin Payne and Malcolm sure. Martin were championing sure, John sure, Orchard. Sure. It was a fight going into it that everybody considered it to be a 50 50 fight and a pound for pound fight. Yeah. How did you feel when that fight was made? When that fight, I mean, I was really excited about the fight and I knew it was going to be a hard fight just because of the length of John Orchard. I mean, yeah. it was like, I remember like holding his arm up at the end of the fight and my hand was on his elbow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. oh my God, how tall is it? Yeah. And, um, but I knew it was going to be a tough fight, but again, I was like at the, the I was at the peak, you know, physically. Uh, when I went into it and I thought this is going to be the, the best fight ever. What people, a lot of people don't know, and again, injury wise, is I remember calling Paul Anderson for a week before and I'd been in the gym um, and it was, you get to, I don't know if you've ever been in that, that zone where your body you just can't, you can't wear it out, you know, you're yeah, just yeah. working, working. Yeah. I remember going to the gym and doing loads and loads of curls on dumbbells and this was like the week before the fight and getting up in the morning and I can't use my arms. My arms have just, both my elbows are completely shot. And I just didn't know what I'd done to, to my elbow. So I went to a physio and I remember saying like to him, like, you know, I've done, and he told me what I'd done to my elbows. And he said, look, you know, you're gonna have to just completely rest them. And this was a week before? A week before. And I remember saying, but I've got a fight on Saturday. And he went, oh, a week on Saturday. And I went, no, no, this Saturday, and I remember him saying, no, there's no way. And I, I found Paul up and I said, look, Paul, I don't think I'm going to fight this fight. You know, my, my, I, I can't literally bend my, I can't strain my arms. And um, Paul, you know, did say to me, friends, up to you. And right. I, and I said, but there's so many people looking forward to this fight. Well, I remember that, that fight was probably one of the only fights at the time that kind of got the build up. It, it got like it everything. It had everything. The magazines yeah, and had the social media. Well, I say Axe Kickboxing at the time, probably. Was yeah. Axe Kickboxing around? Um, and it was. Yeah. yeah it so, was. So, oh, yeah. So there it, was some it, it generated on, yeah. the interest in the kickboxing sure. world. Sure. And I, I just remember kind of like the day before thinking I can strain my arms again and I can, I can punch again but I could only like punch one single punch I couldn't like mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't do this you know what I mean I couldn't do a, a flurry of punches and I thought this is gonna be hard because when I get inside John I need to be able to do what I did with Dale yeah I need yeah, to yeah. be able to hit that body like seven times in a row and like yeah. he'd not be able to go but I could hit him once and then that was it yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. I had to recoil and and uh, not taking it away from John Orchard, it was it was it would have been a tough fight no oh, matter what. I mean I remember I remember at one point, point him leaning back on the ropes and me trying to reach his jaw and yeah. I couldn't reach his jaw and yeah. literally yeah. was missing him and he, he was like he knew how to use his height. His height and position. his length. And that's where I came stuck, you know what yeah. I mean? Because I the, the length and the distance, I just couldn't manage it. It was it was almost impossible to, you know, so So we lost the decision there. Yeah. Um and was that the first full contact fight that you, you hold your hands up and say, yeah, I really felt like I lost that fight? Yeah, at that, that one, it was like, you know, there's nothing I could have done about that. It was, it was all in his favor. He was on form as well on that day. So you can't ever turn around and say, you know, it's, it's just, again, by, by this time, I'm old enough and wise enough not to have the ego to, yeah. to say like, oh no, I was ripped off or this and that. It but was, there's no shame in losing no, to, to, it was, to it a was fighter a, it, at that level. It was a great fight and yeah, yeah. it did, the wonders for the industry yeah and yeah. that's the, that's the main thing you know it was for me it wasn't about a belt anymore the belt mm. wasn't part of it for well, me it, it wasn't a unification was it no it wasn't it wasn't at that time and um and it was just it was just like 
you know, let's just get it on. I want to see who the best is. That's what I was interested yeah. in. I was interested in like, who's the best? I want to see who the best is. And I want to, I don't want to finish my career with people saying, oh, you didn't fight this person though. Yeah. Or you didn't fight that. It was like, give me, give me whoever you want. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to take them on. So did you feel like you fought him again, didn't you, in, in Bournemouth? Fought him again, and it was it was it wasn't the best fight. It was it was a bit of a spoiler, really. He would, I think, he realised that not that I was. I don't know if anybody told him that I was injured on the first fight, but he literally just tied me up. Every time I got him tied, he would just hold my elbows, and I was complaining to the referee saying he keeps holding me, he keeps holding, but. It was just one of them things. It was a real spoiler fight. Yeah. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was probably one of my worst fights. It went in. under the radar, I think, as well. Yeah. Like the first fight was so well publicised. Yeah. The second one. I mean, we travelled down to Bournemouth to watch that fight yeah. to support you, and it was like, yeah, it kind of like under delivered compared to the first one. It was. It was. It was. It, it, it's not one that comes back into my mind really about being a, a great fight. Because I would rather lose a fight and have a great battle. Yeah. Yeah. Than than win a fight easily. You know what yeah. I mean? So. Um, and that's what it was about for me. It was about the battle. I think I realised it was the battle because once the battle was over, it was like, mm. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, Were you still ISK world champion at the time? Um, not in the second fight for John Ernest. Right. I think. Um, just the first one, but not the not the not the second one. Um, I, I, it's a bit of a blur now. To be yeah. Fair. It's a so bit many of a blur. fights. Too many, many fights. Too. <laughs> no, I think it points that often. To be fair. I don't think I ever had a mark, like, that, I think the first mark I ever came out on was the, um, when I fought in Ireland against, who was it against in, in the Ireland? Was it Vinny? Or Tommy? No, it was Tommy. Right. He headbutted me on the last round. Right. Yeah, did you watch that fight? I didn't see it, no. Yeah, I didn't see it. it. Again, that's a, that's a Sarah, that's a Sarah Grapes. So, before we go into that, yeah. you've won the title two times. Yeah. You fought in a super fight against John Orchard. Sure. You've kind of like, you're looking, it's like, how much more is there to do? Yeah. What prompted you, was it Tommy McCarthy first? Tommy you, McCarthy, yeah. So you defending your ISK world title in Ireland, is that right? Uh, yes, in Ireland, yeah. Okay, so for me it's like, okay, Franz Zakala, legend of the sport, sells a shed load of tickets every time he fights. You're not one of these fighters that turn up with no. your corner team. It's no. like you're selling 200 tickets, 300 tickets, whatever it is. Why go to Ireland to fight Tommy McCarthy? Because that was on offer. And I just felt, again, it wasn't about money. It wasn't about belts. It wasn't about anything. Just, I just wanted to fight him. Because I do. Pick another box. I, yeah, I just thought, you know what? He's Everybody's talking about him. And right. I just want to go down. I want to see what he's capable of. Do you know what I mean? So. And that's all it was about for me. That's all it was about. It was people say, "What? When did you win this belt? When did you?" It's like, what does yeah. it matter? You know, what matters is the fight, and and it was a cracking fight right. from from the start to the finish. Talk us through it. It was. I mean, I never ever got the video. They never sent me the video. Right. Maybe there's a reason why they never sent me the video. But um, I thought I, ha I thought I had this fight in the bag. I think Ireland thought I had it in the bag. To right. be fair. I mean, that's all I had all night long is you won the fight, you won the fight, you won the fight. And it's a hard one, it's that, for me personally, I, I, it was like, hey, it was a great fight. It could have gone either way. I'm yeah. not the referee, I'm in the fight, so I can't see exactly what was going on. But all I had all night from the Irish was like, you know, I celebrated with the Irish, to be fair, on right. that night, it was great. And um, I just remember, you know, thinking, towards the end of the fight, this guy's got to pull it out of the bag to win this. Right, he's got to go, and I remember hitting with some really solid shots, and he never went down. And mm -hmm. I thought, you know, hats off to him. You know, he had a jaw, and he had a granite jaw, um, and he was just resilient. He was just a really, you know, to say the Irish are resilient. He was yeah, resilient, yeah. and I think he came the last round. He just slam kicks into me, like you know. And I think in everybody's eyes, he probably won the fight on that. Well, definitely won the last round. I think yeah. he just, you know, put everything he had into it, and. I think that the whole design there was they had it ready for him to win the, the, the title. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember, I'm not saying who, but came up to me and said, look, if this was in Wolverhampton, it would have been yours. It's right. just one of them things, the home, the home territory thing. And But it was one of my fights that I can really remember that was one of my favourite fights. You know what I mean? Right. Isn't it, was, it such a shame that you've not got the, the footage to look back at? I love it. Somebody somebody's in Ireland got it. must have that footage. Yeah, if somebody's got it, please send it to us and we'll, we'll put it on there. So we can lodge an appeal for it. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Another Irish fighter that you fought, uh, Vinny De Russo. Yeah, How I mean, that, that was a last minute decision to take it on. I mean, it was like somebody found me up and said, Look, do you want to fight on this one? And I, I think now people would know I take, I, I take my foot off the accelerator now. And yeah. I, I was taking a bit of a back foot. How old were you at the time? I think I was, um, I was an old man. I was 30, 35, 36 right. at the time. And, um, and I just remember saying, and I'm like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. You know, let's go. And somebody was saying, God, this guy's a PT army instructor. Right. You know, like kettlebell instructor. He's like, you know, he's And was this tough. another world title fight? This is another world title fight. So this would have been three This would have been times. three right. times. And um, I went to it and I, I remember fighting, um, fighting and he was covered. I've got a photograph of it. The guy was covered in blood. I mean, from head to toe, my trousers were covered in blood. He was—he went through a lot of, lot of pain. And again, I thought, yeah, in the back. You know what I mean? Witness yeah. this guy was like spitting blood. He was, he was in a really bad way. Did so he went the distance? He went the distance. Yeah. And I remember speaking to um, him after the fight, and he said, "You'd, you'd really like hurt my rib." And uh, he went to hospital actually after. And a, a funny, a funny story was that um, I was having a shower after, and there was li a, literally a trail of blood coming off my body. You know, not mine, but, but coming yeah. off my body. And I remember the paramedic running past and saying, "Are you okay?" And, and like being, I said, "I'm fine." And he says, oh, "It's okay. The other guy's got to go to hospital. We think he's got a punctured lung." No way. And I'm like, "Oh, all right, okay." And then I went out partying with all the Irish yeah. <laughs> and that night. And, um, Poor old Vinny's in hospital. Yeah, Vinny's in hospital, and and I lost, and I lost that fight. Um, and again, that video never materialised. Another one? Can we have that video as well? Come on, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pull your yeah. finger out. So, every, this video. so Ireland's got some, got some great memories for me. But yeah. again, it was a great fight, and I remember Kyle uh, Williams being in my corner because he went over with me to fight, and. He looked at me as his friend because he came out in a gladiator's um, outfit, I remember, with a big sword, and he was telling me he had muscles popping out of muscles. And I remember turning around to Kyle, and Kyle says, I remember you, friend, you had pads on your arms, so my elbows were still injured from previous fights. Yeah. And and he, he I just went, Don't worry about it. He's, he's, it's the same for any fight. And yeah. he was like, Why are you so calm? Why are you so calm? Like this guy. Yeah, it's and, been there and done it. And, you know, and I think I think Dean Sugden's guys were there at the time. I think they came to watch me and they were like, you know, fight an appeal and there should be an appeal. I was like, I'm not that sort of person. Mm -hmm. Listen, let's leave it in the ring. He won the fight. Congratulations. I asked him for a rematch on the night. Yeah. And he said, I'll never ever fight you again. Is that what he said? That's what he said. So, um, that's a victory in itself. Yeah, so, so, you got so that was it. And, and to, the only thing I really regret about that was being the ego got to me on that one. So right. I was like, I was gutted. I was like, you know, I'll, I, I, that should be mine and this and that. And, um, and now going back in hindsight, I think it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth making myself look foolish, right. you know. And I say that to other people, say, look, you know, if it's out there and it's, I've been my last fight. I mean, you saw my last fight. Listen, we were going to move on to the Another <laughs> yeah. Irish man. That's another Irish man. Yeah, no. it's not a, it's not a, yeah. Return of the champions. That's right. But before we talk about the fight, sure, Frank, you're old and yeah. you've done it all. <laughs> Why? Why? To pass it on. Right. To pass it on. To put to say to other people, this is what it takes. This is what you need to do. And to try and get into, to have something in my head to get into their head, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? To say that, like, it's not just all physical, it is mental, you know? And the only way you can get stronger mentally is to put yourself in that, the fire, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, that's what I did it for. It was like, and to test my own skills, to test my own ability. At how old? What do you mean? How old were you at the time? When? Night of the Champion. <sighs> was, um... You're going to give away your age now, bro. Okay, so I was 40... How many years ago was it? It was two years ago, three like years ago? 2019 maybe. Yeah, three years ago. Three years ago, so uh, 45. 45. 45 years old, yeah. And I probably look better at 45 physically than I did when I was Oh, you look fantastic, Jack. Yeah. And, and the, the little bit of video footage that you released in your training. Sure. You look like like a friend of 28 years old. Yeah, and I, 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 did, I did that, to be fair. One of the reasons was I was getting out of shape. I was right. I was coaching a lot more, and I was. I hate to see an instructor stand in front of the with the, like a big belly, and, yeah. and like he can't, you know, trying to preach things that he can't even do himself. And yeah. 
I thought but at a certain age, you yeah, sure. afford people that haven't you? Yeah, I know that, but I've, I've never been one to like just step back. I've always been the one to be at the forefront of everything. And I just thought, you know, this is good for just like, just my fitness. And was but, this going to lead to anywhere or was this just no, a one fight? This was a one fight deal. No, this was, for me, this was a demonstration. Right. It was a demo fight. It was like, look, let's, let's take it back to the heydays. Let's, let's try and get a big flash with it. Let's yeah. try and get a little bit of kind of like, you know, back to where it used to be. Um, yeah, and the body doesn't want to perform at 45 years old yeah. the way it yeah, wants it to. And, and, and to be fair, it was, it was a push to get me ready for that fight, to be fair. Yeah. But, you know, I did it and, you know, I don't regret it, you know, and the outcome wasn't the so, outcome that I wanted. But. For those of you that haven't watched this fight, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Five rounds, um, clearly won four rounds, like clearly won four rounds. Yeah. Took a count. Sure. Um, but I don't think in anyone's eyes, apart from one Irish official, maybe. Who disappeared. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we yeah. had one judge go your way, one judge give it even, and one judge go his way. No, was it a draw? It was a draw. No, it was, uh, I, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was a, I think, I think they had it as a, as a draw. Yeah, right. one had it as a draw, one had it as a win, and, and the other one had it as a win, so yeah. So it was, on, on the cards, it was a draw, which for me, and again, from an unbiased opinion, we, I was up in the um, up in the stands commentating, I think it was a Facebook feed, sure. and we all had you a very handy winner. Yeah. on that night sure um so they gave you a draw yeah in your last fight yeah i just laughed right i just laughed it off you know what i mean it was uh it was just one of those things and 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 even looking and when i look back in the video it's even worse when yeah, i look back yeah. on it i was like oh my god like i didn't have it wrong you know I'm like, no no you question sure. yourself you know you question yourself and i was like what just happened even getting back in the chain rooms with all the other fighters that were in my corner like in our camp what happened? And I was like, I don't know. I was, uh, but you know. It's, it's, you know, the thing is, it's so like full contact as a sport is already on its knees. Sure. And now you're coming with decisions like that. I know. But I think there's got to be a head on the shopping block at some point. You know yeah. what I mean? Like somebody wants somebody's head, and and you know, I think the pairs of B again were like uh, at play. But did Wilson say anything to you after that fight? He walked into the chain room and said, "I thought I won that." Wilson thought he'd won it. Yeah. Right, okay. So, and I just thought, I looked him up, okay, whatever you think. Like, okay. you know, and, and that's it. And, and try and be a little bit humble with it. But, uh, it, and it, it wasn't a major, it wasn't a major, it was just, it was the last one I was going to do. Yeah, yeah. It was the last one. And I didn't want to go out on a draw. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't want to go out on a loss or a draw. And to go out like that, I was thinking, you know, I thought I did enough. I think even the round that I went down on. You were winning up, up until that up point. Up that point. And then after when I got up, I thought I won the round. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it was because of the knockdown. I thought, and I knew, oh yeah. It's not and right. watching it back, you've still got that same opinion. You won everything apart from the knockdown. Yeah, everything, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think what made me laugh is when I watched your commentary of it, you were like, up in art, you were like, and I was right. like, fair news to me. I was like, oh my God, what are you on about that? What are you watching? Yeah, yeah, what are you watching? It was, it was one of them. So, yeah. you know, it, but as I said, it's hard to, you shouldn't live in the past, you know what I mean? You've got to leave things behind because they haunt you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't haunt me at all. It's like I think that's things. one thing that you've shown everybody, Fran, in, in victory and defeat, humble and, you know, yeah. you, you're showing people, even though it mightn't go your way. Yeah, um, it's just it's just another day. I think, it's, I think it's a shame now because, like, in some of your defeats, there was no accountability, you know, the fights never appeared. Like, I don't know Tommy McCarthy and I don't know Vinnie sure. DeRusso personally, but if I'd won a world title, yeah. you know, I want people to see it, I'm going to put it up on YouTube. You yeah, know, sure, Put sure. it up there, show people the fight. Exactly. And, you know, people will have difference of, his, of opinion, yeah. which is fine, but I think there's got to be a little bit of accountability there, hasn't there? 100%, yeah, 100%. So, the best fight you ever fought, who was it? The, you know what? I can't remember his name, and it wasn't any of the world titles. It was it was a, that French guy at the. Um, I don't know if you were, were you there at the. It was St George's Day. It was a big event. They had the. I was world champion. They had all the Union Jack saves. They had I think, the French I think guys I commentated on it. Toughest fight of my life. I mean, I remember him kicking me in the ribs, and, and it wasn't in my ribs. It was in my in my arm, and my arm was actually hitting my ribs. And going back to the corner, thinking. This guy is too strong. He's right. like too strong. But I was world champion, yeah. and I was like, God, I can't let this down because this guy's gonna have it. And I, I remember asking, um, 
think it was Paul, I remember asking Paul, who is this guy? But they were very a closed book France. They kept their fighters right. like to themselves in their own little circuits. Yeah. But they were they were all good. You know, the Dutch and the French were you know very good at the time. And I remember towards the end of the fight, just hitting, hitting him with a body shot, and I think he fouled him a little bit, and I thought, yeah, I've got you. And I remember sweep, sweeping his leg a couple of times, yeah. and that, I, I thought, I know where his, where his floors are now. I remember sweeping him and hitting him in the body a lot, and getting the decision, and then after saying to Paul, who the hell was that? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. I, wasn't ex I was expecting an exhibition fight, and ended up having one of the hardest fights of my life. Waking up the next morning with like, black ribs. Oh, was like, that over five red? That was just over five rounds. See, that could have been a really good that fight. Could have been a, well, yeah, it? it could have been a really good fight. And then Paul saying, I've just found his record and he had like 80 wins and like, I think 75 by knockout. Right. Or something, a I mean, the most ridiculous yeah. record you've ever see, heard in your life. And I looked at Paul and went, yeah. cheers. Thanks it, for that. It all makes Thanks sense. Yeah, it all makes sense. I understand it, yeah. So, so you so. think he was the best fighter and probably the hardest fight as well? Probably the hardest fight I've ever had, yeah. Yeah, it was over five rounds, so of course it would have been over 12, maybe I wouldn't be saying that, but because it was but so But I think you got better as you were going Exactly, you were yeah. Longer, yeah. I mean, like when I, when I fought on my last fight with, uh, really, um, five rounds is not enough yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. Like, I get going, like, at, you know, as I said, like the sixth, seventh round, yeah. where I start, where people start to get tired, I like to get stronger, so it was, uh, I always thought when 12 rounds came, I thought, 12 rounds. Like other people look at 12 and go, oh, 12's too long. Yeah. But 12 is great. You know, you can take your time and you can, you know, get to it eventually. So <laughs> you said that you were a little bit underwhelmed by your world title wins. Sure. So which was your most, what fight made you the most proud? Um, I think fighting in the NEC against, it wasn't the best fight. Yeah. But I think it was just fighting in the NEC in front of a massive audience and being able to show about really. Yeah. You know, and I said, Was that against the American? American champion. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't anywhere near my standard, to be fair. And Dave, uh, was it Dave Newbrook? Something. Newbrook or something yeah. like that, yeah. And we tried to get him on the Return of the Champions, but he just didn't want to know. He didn't want to come in. On I, don't blame I don't blame him. him. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but yeah, and, and, and that, that, was, that was a really proud moment because. My club was at its biggest at the time, and yeah. it was like there were a lot of people watching, and it was just televised was, as well. Wasn't yeah, it was it? televised, and it got and it got viewed so many times. I remember there was because at the time I was sparring, with, I was training with um, Harvey a lot. Mm -hmm. We were in the same camp, really, like, and we, we were doing a lot of training together. And he was a phenomenal fighter, and I remember the, the venue had run over, and it was costing him a lot of money, and then running into the venue and saying, look, if anybody knocks their opponents out early, yeah. they get a 50 pound bonus. And in them <laughs> days, 50 pound was like 100, 150 yeah. pounds, or something. Yeah, it was yeah, a week's yeah, yeah. wages, you know, yeah. it was a week's wages. And I remember, like, my brother coming in and saying, whatever you do, don't knock him out, because it's being televised. And I was like, really? He said, yeah, don't, whatever you do, make an exhibition and I was like okay I, I will and then Harvey went no no I want my 50 pounds and like he was like don't do it it's worth more than 50 pounds it's yeah. gonna be and Harvey's fight never got shown I think yeah. got shown once yeah yeah he yeah, got yeah, shown yeah. once yeah but mine's got shown like 20 30 times yeah, like in the yeah, past yeah. and like and um I think I don't know if Harvey said it to me or whatever says you were totally right you know what I mean like that I should never have knocked you out you know what good, I mean like, good so, call that yeah night. it was great stage though wasn't it it, it was a great call, stage right? yeah it was great it was great so final fight record uh, what was your record can you I can't even fathom it I can't even go, go there um I don't know all I know that my, my knockout rate that I mean I was more interested towards the end it was like knockout rate what was my right. knockout rate he was right. over like 70 percent or was it 50 percent so I think my knockout was about 60-70% right. of my fights and and numbers, what do numbers mean really now? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Because I mean, you could have you could have a hundred fights under your belt, but they could be all ringers the, the yeah, first yeah. 50, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean anything to me at all. What what it was the quality of who I fought. Yeah. You know, I'd rather fight ten of the best in the world yeah. than a hundred and a hundred of them were, you know, the fifty of them were just rubbish, you know what I mean? So it was always the quality of fighting instead of the head mini. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, outside of fighting, right. you've had like a crazy fighting career. You, you'd be forgiven if you've never done a thing outside of fighting with a career like that. 
But you become a, a very successful instructor, coach and gym owner. Sure. Uh, one of the biggest centres in the UK, the most successful centres in the UK. Yeah. What year did you start teaching? I was um, 17 years old. When I started to teach, I taught in schools and I was I was earning more in the schools than I was in my, my job. I think I was earning something like 80 pounds a week in my job. Yeah. And I was taking, you know, a lot more than that in just the skills. I was thinking this could be a career. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was I was um, investing very heavily in like business and finance um, education. So I thought, you know, I can start my own business. And at the time I remember people saying to me, you know, you can't do a business in kickboxing. You know what I mean? Like kickboxing, it's just a, a little sport. Yeah. You know, it's like karate. You can't do it. You know, the centers don't open up. And I did a business plan, and um, I think at the age of 18, I uh, applied for a, a um, Prince's Trust grant. Right. It was three thousand pound, and set up a very small dojo. And after I'd won the world title, after like 10 years of doing that. I was I was literally nearly at the end of trying try and people around me were saying, you know, he won't do it. The weird thing is now the people who are always like not talking about my back, but the people who were saying this won't work mm -hmm. and now got successful gyms themselves. Right. You know what I mean? So, so I'm not saying that they, they kind of followed me, but it was um, you know that as soon as people saw that my business was doing better and getting better, and I used the blueprint, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. There was like you know other people started to to do the same. So. Yeah, it was, um, it, it, it kind of grew from there. And your super centre opened, uh, did I read 1989? No, 1999, 89? 89. 89, wow. Sure. So, uh, and then it's it just got bigger and bigger. I mean, we moved into a, we bought our own building now in the in the heart of Wolverhampton. And um, it's a it's, phenomenal gym. If you guys haven't seen it, yeah, look it up on YouTube, look it up on, on, um, on the internet. Phenomenal gym. Yeah, it's, and, and, and we've, you know, we hit we hit a, a really high number of students, but COVID, of course, affected yeah. everybody. And we sat back and thought, you know, what, what are we going to do? So we kind of re done the whole gym out. Uh, we took on a lower, and we took you know took a risk. Yeah. But I think it's just like I think you, you, you take your fight in, into your real life. You know, you take risks when you get into the ring. Yeah, yeah. But you have to take risks for the reward. You know what I mean? So we, we've done that, and we've come out, you know, on the other end, and we've got a really, really strong camp now. Strong and club. Is it, would you say it's more kickboxing or more jujitsu, or about half and half? It's about half and half now. And now we've taken on boxing as well. I yeah. mean, our boxing the camp, uh, like it's, it's headed by Carl Williams, and and that's really, really kicked off as well so they're all strong now in the gym yeah. um, and I wouldn't say one's bigger than the other now I mean the jiu-jitsu is getting really really big now so yeah it's uh, it's all it is really a, working a, hand in a, hand a lot of gyms that you go to that have got like multi styles it's like the gym owner will do the kickboxing he'll bring someone in to do the jiu-jitsu bring sure. someone in to do the boxing whereas you got you're all homegrown you're homegrown yeah I mean in the future we, we, we're looking to move into MMA because mm -hmm of the jiu-jitsu that we do and we do boxing and the kickboxing and trying to kind of link them up together and do it in a way where people off the street can't just come in and do MMA. They've got to do so many years of kickboxing or yeah. so many years of jiu-jitsu before they can come into the MMA side of it and then both aspects of like striking and, and ground yeah. game. But um, that's a, a little step in the future that, that we're trying to work, work to. Um, but we've just been trying to get our business really strong before we concentrate on other, other, other things. You seem to have your balance like even perfect because you've got like you've got the numbers, sure. you've got the facility, you've got the standard. I mean, how many gyms of that kind of size that have got that kind of numbers produce world professional champions? Not many. I mean, Carl Williams right the way through to kickboxing world champion now flying the flag in, in boxing. boxing yeah. Yeah. How do you balance it all out? I think uh, I, I think that you can have. Cause some people think that like if a if a gym is going to make money or yeah, a business is going to make money, it has to drop its standards. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's totally the opposite. I think you can have everything. You can have, you know, you have to, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of leg work. But you can have like a successful gym and successful fighters as well. And you know, if you've got the facilities, then the, the fighters. I mean, if, if I had the facilities the fighters have got now. Oh yeah, my yeah, God. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. You, you could you could really do a lot of damage, but um, you know, it's it, you can have both. You can have both.
And, and do, you, do you feel like that's the route that you want to continue to put out fighters to, to produce good we, quality black yeah, belts sure. as well? We, we took a little bit of a back seat because we wanted to get the business really strong and the business is there now. So we are definitely concentrating on our fighters now. And then we're, and we're hitting fights in MMA, we're doing fights in boxing and kickboxing, so we're everywhere. I um, mean, quite sorry if, at the moment because Carl's do, you know, out doing boxing and he's having to do kickboxing. And, yeah. I mean, we don't do a lot of like uh, competitions in Jiu Jitsu because our Jiu Jitsu is very kind of orientated around MMA, really. Right. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a busy gym, that's all I can say. We're, we're really busy. And, and something I did want to touch on it's like you've been ahead of the curve with. Technology. I remember sure. going to a BLCC at yours, and BLCC is a very basic, what it says on the tin. Yeah. And it's like, right, go onto this app, you can see when you're fighting, who you're fighting, <laughs> at what time you're fighting, and I'm like, whoa, what's what going on? This? Yeah. And, and Kyle said, like, you know, Fran, big into his technology, he always sure. wants to embrace technology and ways of making things sure. better. Sure. Um, and I think, I think it's, it's, it's weird because martial arts have done things not wrong for so many years, but they've done it in a certain way for so many years, but they haven't changed with the times. Yeah. And I was like, uh, probably at the forefront of seeing uh, how things were gonna be in a few years time and and getting there earlier than later. Um, so yeah, technology follows us around everywhere from our students having their own apps to see exactly where they're, what lessons they need to come to, to gain the next level and things like that. Um, to when they're swiping at checkout, to um, to see their attendance, to to everything, to booking in for lessons, to you know competitions being uh, monitored, so people can see exactly when they're going to be on and things like that. And so, it makes your life so much easier as well. It does. It does. There's a little bit like anything. There's a little work at the beginning, but then it makes everybody's life easier later on. And it was hard, really. I remember that BLCC actually when we, when we put that on and. Because people were so used to a certain way of yeah, being yeah. done, like at a board with just bit written on yeah, and things yeah. like that. that. And we would take, people were standing outside queuing for quite a long time. And I was saying, look guys, I went outside and said, you might be queuing for a long time, but once we get, all, get you all on the system and we're all weighed in and, and whatever, it's gonna go quicker. Yeah, and I think yeah. we were finished. Yeah, yeah. So quickly. It was and what true. was impressive that day was like, it, it was a two ring event as well, and you still yeah, sure. managed to keep it all together. Yeah, sure. So no, it, it was a great event. I mean, I love the BLCC, it's a great, yeah. Brilliant. So, life outside of martial arts. Sure. Is the time for anything, Fred? What, what do you do in your downtime from the gym? Downtime, I think it's just family time. I think, um, I mean, I've got two older boys now. They're doing that, their own thing now. Uh, and it's just time really, you know, relaxing and trying to just, I don't bring, if you went into my house, you would not see anything with kickboxing in. Yeah. You wouldn't see I anything. It's I totally separate from my life. Where's um, all your world title belts? Are they're, they at the they're at the gym, but yeah. they collect, I need to get them. Again, this is another thing because like, we were talking earlier about like the old school being like, yeah, you know, not wanting yeah. to talk about yeah, themselves yeah. or not wanting to do much. And if people walk in the gym, they don't know I own that gym. There's, yeah. no, there's, there's a belt, but they don't know whose it is. Yeah. I haven't got a picture. I've walked up your stairs and you had pictures of all your fights and fighters and this and that. And really, I need to do that, but. Um, I need to get those belts put on the wall get them and framed, fa framed yeah, and put yeah. a photograph in there and yeah. say this is you know what I've achieved. But thanks to you, these interviews might you know. But did these interviews are to tell the people about the history of the people that paved the way? Sure. And it's like for me, like you're one of my inspirations oh, in the sport. Thanks. I think you're like a, yeah. a, a flag flyer of my sport that I'm so passionate about. Sure. And I think your story needed to be told, definitely. So any regrets? Any regrets? Probably fighting injured. I yeah. think I'd say to any fighter now, if you have an injury and it's bad, just don't fight. You know what I mean? Like there's another day, just do it another time. Apart from that, no regrets. You know what I mean? No regrets. I've everything enjoyed, happens for a reason. I've enjoyed everything, yeah, of course. I've enjoyed everything. Well, I think like you've got a sterling fighting career, you've got an amazing gym, you've got like, you know, life is good for you, so sure. you've done something right, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, plans for the future? Uh, Expanding uh, the business, definitely. Um, it took us a long time to get this kind of like really well working you know, oil machine together. Mm -hmm. And now I want to kind of duplicate that and, and, and move it on to different areas around you know, the West Midlands, maybe further. Um, and then really like 
looking at coaching now, like a lot more, a lot more coaching and, and trying to put people out there and you know and get them to where they want to, want to get to. So um, focus on that. So, yeah. so more of the same. More of the same. More of the same. Your yeah. passions never waved over the years with uh, your coaching. No, not with the coaching, yeah. I mean, I, there's one thing about when you teach is seeing people. I taught a beginners class yesterday. And they, were, they were amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? They were amazing. And I, I said, guys, I'm really impressed. I'm not just saying it. I am really impressed at your level, what you're coming through, you know, how you're coming through. And I think with the right coaching, people can, we can get back there to that standard where it used to be. Because they, they, yeah. they, there was a standard that, that you look now and you think, it's, it's few and far between it now. It is now, yeah. It's, it's hard. It's very difficult. And there's a lot of camps out there that are run by people who haven't done things. Not that you need, you can be a good coach and not have a world title belt under your belt. But there's a lot of people who have opened clubs up who probably have one fight. Yeah. And they're trying to tell people how they should fight. But they're, they're, they're waving, you know, dangling carrots in front of them to say, yeah, we'll get you this and we'll get you that. And promising things that they can't really you know give to that person i think it's a, a message to everyone out there you know if you're looking at getting your kids into martial arts or looking at getting into martial arts yourself do your homework man. sure do your yeah. homework check out what the instructors have done check out who they've produced um because there are a lot of charlatans out there there is there? there is and more than ever and i think it, uh, i wish it to be better regulated you mm -hmm. know what i mean because if it was more regulated then you know we'd be it would be better for me and better for yourself yeah. because yeah. we are at the forefront of it but um and hopefully you know, shut down a lot of the people that were that are charlatans in it and, yeah. and, and are you know uh bringing the standards there and, and not doing you know the job that they shouldn't be doing so something i like to ask as a go-to question, what one piece of advice could you give a fighter coming through? Listen, you can give loads of advice on instructors and coaching and everything else, but for me, Fran Zicalo is a fighter. Right. What one piece of advice could you give a young fighter coming through to get to the top? I think uh, something that's been a lot of bull bear on me for a long time, so I'd say be very humble, be humble and be, you know, respectful for the people around you and don't take, I mean, multimedia now is such a, a, a negative and there's, there's pluses, but it's very negative. You yeah. know, you see fighters now that disrespect each other, the weigh-ins, I know it's a show and things like that, but you don't need to be that person, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, like focus on the skill levels, focus on yourself, you know, and don't look around and think you have to be a certain way, you know what I mean? You, you can you, you know, listen to your coach, of course, but at the same time, you don't need to be disrespectful and you don't need to, you know, put somebody down to make you feel better. It's, I see a lot of it these days. And, and I was, like I was saying, I'm talking about the, the fight in the world title where I realized that I didn't celebrate, I didn't do yeah, anything because yeah, I was more yeah. concerned about that person. And I think we're losing that in martial arts. So mm -hmm. to anybody who's wanting to get to the top level, then, you know, try, try and, you know, again, just try and be humble. Try and be humble and try and be respectful for the people around you. And I think, you know, if you do that, you'll, you'll, you'll live long enough to be a world champion. You know what I mean? But awesome. It, yeah. So finally, shout outs and thank yous. Have you got anyone you'd like to give shout outs to or thank yous? I've, I mean, I've mentioned some of the coaches I had in, in the past, so I'll shout out to them. Um, I, Big shout out to, it's really weird because a big shout out to Carl Williams because I brought him through as a small child yeah. and then he's taught me things as he's got older and we kind of like, you know, father and son really, but yeah, let's call us brothers if you want to call us yeah, brothers yeah, yeah. and and we kind of watch each other's backs and push each other in and, and then me and Carl are kind of like, kind of partners in, mm -hmm. the, in the business really. So. Um, big shout out to that because you need that motivation around you as well. Like, I motivate him and I've got him to where he is going, he's motivated me and, and so on. So, uh, there's one big shout out. Big shout out to all my family and my, my wife and my kids and everybody who's around me, really. Like, big shout out to every student I've ever taught because they're an inspiration as well. Do you know what I mean? They don't yeah. realize that I get more out of teaching than I did from my world title. So, that's it. Brilliant, Fran. It's been an absolute pleasure and an honour to interview you Cheers, today. Man. Same here. Keep watching live stories, Fran Zucala. <laughs>